All right, right let's get... be ready. Got some questions for me? Um, I, I got a few questions for you, I guess. I could probably come up with someone on the fly, but if not, there's, there's like brief periods, you know, I just edit them out and whatnot. So, yeah. All good. Okay, let's let's see what let's see let's see let's see what kind of questions I got. All right, let's let's, let's talk about some more recent news. We, you, you have Dan Beeb. He's in lightweight division, such as you. You know, you're the champion, of course. Um, what do you make out of his skills? What, what do you think about him? Give me your give me your impression on Dan. Dan Beeb. I like Dan Beeb a lot, but Dan Beeb, he's just he's a strict Muslim. And all he does is eat, sleep, and train. Mm -hmm. But the problem is, I'm not seeing that when I see Dan Beeb fight. Although Dan Beeb is winning his fights, they're not really against that many great people. And I don't think he wants to fight me because I just see, I just see Dan Beeb going for a takedown. And if he shoots for me, he's either going to get knocked out or I'm going to submit him. So I just see, I just see Dan Beeb as one of the guys to like test the other fighters, but he's not, he's not a real champion uh, contender in my opinion. Oh. I think he's somebody who would like, he's like a little like main card type fighter who would like fill out a card, like like Chris Gaethje. Yeah, like Chris Gaethje. Oh, okay. So you're trying to say that he's kind of like a? Would you even give him gatekeeper status almost like, some someone that can gauge like. If, I, if, so, if it, someone beats he's him. Like, Go ahead. I think I think he's like the the guy um who is in the front of like the club bodyguard who's like he tests oh. you to get in. Okay. That, that's something Dan Beeb is. Shoot. I I personally thought that Dan Beeb was an up and coming star. I thought he was knocking out some or beating um, you know, these younger fighters, not the youngers or like these unranked fighters, you know, he's, he's building his way up, such as, you know, I did, you know, you've been Kim, uh -huh, yeah. But um, regardless, I think, I don't think he's title title worthy or like material or like not even top three as of right now. And that's because in his fight today, it was pretty close, I thought. I, th I thought his fight today was pretty close. What do you think? I mean, I thought it was also pretty close. I think Dan Beeb is, he... But the problem with Dan Beeb is he's not as dangerous as everybody's saying he is. He's, mm. I think all the hype for him is just because he's a Khabib gimmick. He's not, nobody actually, everybody only respects him because he's a Khabib gimmick. Uh, yeah. All these Khabib gimmicks, man. But, you know, Dan Beeb, I, I'd watch out for him just for just for a while at least. Um, but let's talk about some other lightweights. Um, you mentioned Chris Gagey. He had a great showing against Savion. I thought that he was supposed to beat Chris Savion pretty, pretty easily, but it was pretty back and forth, making it one of the best fights to ever to, to ever to ever happen in FFC. But how do you feel about what, what do you make out of that? Savion versus Chris Gagey. Chris Gagey getting knocked down like what twice? Um, I think he's ranked Chris number five Gaethje. right now. Chris Gagey is a he's a great man. He's a great guy, but there should be no... Savion is also the man, but mm. Savion knows that he's 0 of 9 currently. I don't think he's ever gotten the win. Ever. Oh. Yes, and no. you let the man almost knock you out. Mm. I don't... I just don't... I just don't see Gaethje. Gaethje puts in the work, but he just becomes Michael Chandler out there. I think that's oh, the best yeah. way to put it. He just... He just, like stops thinking and starts fighting yeah I, I definitely agree with that he, de he definitely gave me that kind of vibe because i feel like if chris gaethje were, were to be a little more technical with his striking or with his fighting in general he should have been able to beat um savion glacier relatively easily um but I, you know i i'm checking the, the ffc rankings right now dan beep actually is ranked number three right now i thought he was ranked lower but um, apparently he's number three you might have to fight him for a title eventually. Do you think? Do you think that he gives you any problems in a in a title in a, in a five round match? I don't think anybody um, besides Johnny Bate um, can survive past round three against me in the top five or in the lightweight division. Um, oh damn! 
I would low key clear out everyone. Uh, there's been too much disrespect towards Deuce Wade's name. I think that whenever or whoever I fight at FFC 13, I'm going to make it look very easy. And I'm going to I'm gonna get more views than Rob because Rob is a boring fighter. And he's oh. dodging his fourth fight. You're talking about Rob, the, the retired middleweight champion. That, that Rob? Uh, yeah, the one I beat twice. Oh, okay. Well, he's retired. I'd say we let that man stay retired. He's, he, you know, I'm glad I don't have to fight him. Because, you know, well, actually, I kind of want to fight him. But it is what it he is. He did nothing. He did nothing for the sport. That's, like, well, that's what I thought. He's, he's a Hall of Famer now. So do you think you go down as a Hall of Famer by the end of this? I'm, I go down as the GOAT of the FFC. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, the GOAT. All right. The All GOAT. Right, the, I, I I see. Okay, yeah, you're number one in the pound for pound front right now, and um, I, I I guess I guess you know it, you could be in the argument there. I'm not sure how everyone else feels, but you could be in the argument there. Um, but speaking of you know lightweight fights, Johnny Bates versus Tyler Francis, number one versus number two, um, they're gonna go at it and projected it's projected that th that winner will, will end up facing you. What do you make out of both of those fighters, starting with Johnny Bates? I think Johnny Bate is a very cool dude. Um, lots of props to him. But I think he was struggling against Murder's Wrestling. And um, he was very telegraphed. He was throwing a lot of just light kicks in a row towards uh, Murder. And he was getting held down for two rounds by Murder's Wrestling. And if you saw my fight with Murder, it was it wasn't even close on the ground. Murder was scrambling for his life, and I just think if I fight Johnny Bate, Johnny Bate will be submitted in the third round. That that would be my um, prediction. Mm. I wouldn't. I, I could. I could probably get it earlier if I wanted to with a backpack cheese, but <laughs> I'm not Tyler Francis, so I don't want to cheese my way to a victory. I want to have to actually win. Oh, is Tyler Francis a known backpack cheeser? Yeah, just Tyler Francis is just a joke to me. Uh, not a real contender, in my opinion. Ah. Uh, if I fight him, he's going out cold. I'm not. I'm not going to submit him. I'm just going to knock him out. Okay. All right. Well, the reason why Johnny Bates and Tyler Francis are fighting now is because obviously Murder had to pull out of you know the fight with Tyler due to uh, injury. Or you know <clears throat> monitor issues, but what were your, what were your predictions for that fight, Murder versus Tyler? I know you mentioned both of them just now in your little monologue there, but who do you think would have won that see, fight? I, I I see Murder taking out Tyler in the first round. Ooh, that's what I saw because Tyler, you know, a lot of racism been rooted there, so he would oh. he would just run out and I think Murder would catch him with a left hook and sleep him. I think I definitely that racism, would yeah. take him out. Hmm. Okay. All right. That's interesting. So to me, it sounds like nobody's really an issue in the lightweight division for you. Um. I mean, you, you've been, you're doing good for yourself. You haven't lost yet, I believe. Uh, no, you were you lost once. Um. No, I didn't lose that fight. Oh, if yeah. you watch the fight, I think I was up on the judges' scorecards, but somebody, I think, I think it was like another coach from like a round before like a mario or like or it was the ladingle and the murder fight before i believe that they were pouring an excess amount of water on the campus to mm. um at the to get more like time to breathe you know you saw that trick in adesanya versus Pereira, and i believe they did that um but they didn't the the ffc management team didn't do enough to like clear out the stain so i I'm... slipped and the ref called it uh okay yeah you know what yeah I, I i believe that i believe that um you know it is what it is it goes down as an l unfortunately and i i know how it feels to slip in the ring and everything my first fight with Jer jeremius per per pierre whatever his name was i got knocked Fair down enough. like twice I got knocked down twice in the first round um apparently knocked down of course i slipped on you know a pile of water, a little puddle that was there from the previous fight. 
So I understand how it feels to be, you know, slipping in the cage. It's unfortunate. FFC needs to do a little bit more about that, but you know, I digress. We, we move on. Um, I agree. Let's see. Let's see. Um, let's talk about uh, the splurgy fruit bowl and the, the drug incidents in the FFC. How do you make? What do you make out of that? Um, I think it all started with Robert Thompson. He he was the first one. He was the first one to bring up and accused me of using dark elixir. But we all know he was on it. You know, you saw the transformation of him. He was a little blue boy at FFC one and FFC um, two. He was a tiny little blue man that thought he he was. Then he suddenly his the pigment of his skin color changed, and mm. then his legs. The, his leg size changed as well and he suddenly grew hair he was bald before it looked like he had leukemia but it suddenly <laughs> changed so hmm. that's how you know there was something going on there that's not a natty transformation that's dark elixir most likely dark elixir. oh shoot I, i'm not i'm not 100 percent sure but uh does the ffc have a uh, facade testing uh established or no Fruipsada? Fruipsada? oh yeah Fruipsada. yeah Fruipsada. my bad oh um yeah, but they they don't really come to my door, really. I heard they were at Sal and Tyler's door because yeah. saw the whole drug scheme with them and stuff. Yeah, that's that's what, also part of the reason why I brought it up. Yeah, yeah. Ryu is also the biggest um, drug user in the FFC. He oh. had that roid rage that one day whenever he was saying he was gonna take the belt to um, the RCC and stuff. Oh. Yeah, you don't like to see that. Are oh, you talking about Redrick Romero? Um, the guy number Red two middle right or whatever now? he 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 he's he's just like i don't know he changes his name a lot he's like murder identity crisis oh yeah, yeah. he is fighting for the belt you're right yeah he's fighting um, for the belt against arlen Vera and my weight class my weight class of course um unfortunately but it's it's whatever you know um i i i, I hope the best for both of them but you know i bring up the the drug the drug uh allegations because tyler francis and uh, Sal, the Anaconda, both in your division, have been rumored, and I, I reported this case uh, for you know, uh, drug use, steroids, cocaine, dark elixir, whatever you might want to call it. But how, how do you how do you feel about that? Do you think something should be done? What do you think the FFC should be doing about these dark elixir users? I think we need to feed them to Dembe. That's what we did with um, El Nimbus, known hacker with the like cheese. I'm not going to oh. get into that, but that's what happened. That's what you saw out there. Whenever you fight a guy like Dembe, you just don't beat him. It's impossible. Nobody uh, can. Of course, you're referencing uh, Sorel Gone, right? Sorel Gone? No, oh, Pharrell Gone. For real. For real. For real. Ah uh, yes, yes. Uh, he's currently suspended at the moment. I know you said that you don't really, you know, want to talk about it, but you know, he's suspended. Uh, do you feel like the suspension is uh, valid? I know he's complaining yes. about it currently. Um, his only argument to it was he didn't have anything in his downloads folder. Mm, but right. I know what I saw. It was a Thursday night or something, and I was bugged. This is how I know. I was I had a bug where he leg kick killed me, uh, TKO'd me in the spar before, but and then like you know how the game like in a spar or whatever like when they simulate it in the octagon it like it doesn't like revive you whenever you like get up and stuff it like keeps you on the ground. Right. I was on the ground, right? Mm-hmm. And we rematch, but I'm crawling. I can't get up. I literally can't get up. I walk up to him, but I'm crawling, right? He doesn't even know I can attack. I throw a fast leg kick and he checks it. He does mm. and he doesn't know I can get up or throw a punch when I'm on the ground. And he checks it. But here's the problem. A few every time he checks a leg kick, he doesn't fall for it. He never like misses a leg check. But whenever mm. he turns it off, he can't hit a leg check. So mm. I just think like he can't like he you can see him like going for it um whenever he turns it off but he just can't land it but then he'll go on streaks of like he can check it five times in a row even though he doesn't know 
and if you throw a feint, he won't even fall for it. He'll just check it whenever you actually throw it. So just just a lot of um, Dark Elixir users in the FFC. Yeah, it's pretty suspicious. Um, I, I remember before these allegations came out, he was regarded as uh, one of the best fighters defensively um, before uh, he, became, he came into the FFC. Uh, I, I don't know what to make out of it. Hopefully something is done about these Dark Elixir users. I know there's a lot of drug heads in your division. Um, thankfully, you know, you're still natty, hopefully. Um, I'm, I'm not, I can't confirm whether you're natty or not. Um, but hopefully, uh, you know, things go well in the future of, uh, Troop Sada and drugs in the FFC. Yeah, we'll Let's definitely see. have to double down on that because I didn't even know you could hack in Undisputed Combat until I got DMs from the champ and other fighters saying, why is Furrow fighting? He was a hacker. So I no. also got those DMs as well. Um, yeah. Because as, as you know, I do run you know a small little organization um, currently in a high the mode, but yeah, I got, I got a few complaints about that. Um, well, let's see let's see i remember i had another thing to talk about mm -hmm, mm -hmm. one moment i'm gonna fc of a dead organization at the moment you know but uh, it, it is what it is man i wouldn't be able to run mine by myself i get tough. carried by torture but she's not getting a pay raise it is tough to do it by yourself i mean i remember it was like i did it during like the winter break um and I had nothing to do, so I'd just be running it all day. And, you know, obviously that's not sustainable once, you know, school starts up again. But uh, it was fun while it lasted. I, I want to do it again. I want to keep doing it, but it's probably not going to happen for a while. So let's, um, let's talk about some upcoming stars. Uh, you know, a lot of new people have joined SFC as of late. I'm sure you noticed um, a lot of good signings. Thinky Sock being uh one of them. Stinky Sock. Where do we even start? Man, Stinky Sock. I'm a fan. He's probably my favorite heavyweight at the moment. Um, I mean, he just had one fight, but wow. Oh, the, the energy that he radiates. He just has that star power to him. What, what do you think about he, Stinky Star? I think Stinky Stinky Sock Sorry, is... Um, I think... I think he's like a patty type a uh, patty pimplet type fighter everybody Ooh. loves him but instead of losing to jared gordon 30 27 <laughs> he um he knocks people out with flying knees. and with the clip he just sent in the server um of his knockout you can see russo didn't even get hit by the knee he just collapsed the pressure was too much and he just collapsed and had cardiac arrest, I think. He, the lead, the knee didn't even land. Look, he just sent a screenshot. It didn't even land. I think, actually, here's what I think happened. Ruzo um, saw the knee and his light flashed before his eyes and he fainted. I think, I think that's what happened. Yeah, I don't know. It's, it's, it was kind of crazy. It's kind of crazy looking. Um, the whole, the whole flying knee. But I think... I think he's still a star. I mean, definitely Patty Pimblet type right now. He hasn't fought any real competitors, I don't think, depending on how you gauge um, Stinky Stock. No, not Stinky Stock. Uh, uh, Rizgar. Um, but... Riz Rizgar. Yeah, um, Rizgar. I, I like him. I think he's a really, well, pause. I think he's mm. he's a really like great boxer. I think he has one of the best hands in the FFC. It was just Stinky Sock was too dangerous you know my knees they're always coming out after it was some ron johnson type attacks ron wait, wait ron, that's, those are some ron johnson types attacks are you saying you didn't hear it from me uh i heard i as you know i i am fighting ron johnson on uh, i believe on ffc 12 um, I'm not sure if I'm going to be on the February main card. 4th. February 4th. February 4th. I heard. Oh, I'm, yeah. You, I'm, you should be on the main card. I, I heard that I was going to be on the prelim for preliminaries. Um, you know, I don't really care, I guess. Fuck it. But 
Um, I heard that Ron Johnson throws some crazy wild shit in the, in the middle of the, the match when you least expect it. And, you know, I'm worried about becoming a highlight reel for Ron Johnson. I mean, you've seen my chin. I, I do get knocked down. Um, no, no, I mean, I do slip a lot. Um, but mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I do slip a lot. So yeah, it happens. You know, I, I just uh, don't want the refs to, you know, to uh, stop the fight too early. You, you understand? Yeah, you probably want, um, I would say, Des Greeny as your ref. He's historically known for not stopping fights. He just lets the person get killed. Yeah. Um, but speaking of FFC 12, this is just gonna be. This is a little. This is a little like um, fight. This is for the people who watched. Uh, I'll just leak a good fight for it. Um, right, Polia it. is going to fight Dan Beebe on FFC 12. Oh, oh, you guys heard it here first. Polia versus Dan Beebe. Okay, that, that's Shasta's an exciting gonna fight. Be on that card. Shasta is going to be on that card as well. Yes. Um, Shasta told me that he would be fighting Miguel. Some nobody I've, I've, I've heard. Miguel will. That is the guy who Ryu brutally murdered with the flying <laughs> knee but yes that is a confirmed fight on the ffc prelim well in here you heard I'm it from a, me i'm a great fan of well a big fan of shasta Braj. i know i beat him uh, in my last outing um you know he also made me slip in the fight as well um but Great fighter, all respect to him. I hope he takes the dub. He he's been he wants the rematch for me. We dis we discussed privately. Um, hopefully he does get that rematch eventually. Maybe when I'm like a champion or whatever, you know. Hypothetically, if I was champion or you know if I become champion, but it is what it is. Um, FFC 12, very exciting event. I'm pretty sure you're headlining, right? No, I'm not. Um, I am headlining FFC 13, but FFC 12. Um, today got announced headlining um, Whitaker versus um, Vera for right. the middleweight championship. Middleweight, yeah, middleweight champion. Okay, yeah. Well, as you know, you know, we're we're awarding them, I guess. You know, they're holding my belt for for whatever reason, but it's fine. It's fine. Um, moving on. I digress once again. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Recent news. Um, Ira and Kathy. I'm very upset about that fight. I've been talking about it a lot. I wanted that fight to go to go through. Pyra unfortunately got injured. What do you make out of Pyra and Kathy? I know Kathy just lost today. Um, what do you, what do you make out of these fi female fighters? And if I, if I do say something so myself, I think FFC is growing in numbers when it comes to female fighters, which I think is something new to all organizations in World Combat. How do you feel about that? Um, I won't spoil who. But we are getting a sponsorship from this woman's only organization. Ooh. And I believe that we will be opening a woman's division whenever possible. But no, no, that's crazy. But um, I liked um, Kathy versus Pyra. I thought it was cool. But I also thought how um, shout out, Le shout out Dorcher, shout out LaFraud. Um, mm, he came mm. in clutch with that little double trouble poster last second, you know. Great poster. Um, yeah, he always finds a way to put out high quality and original posters. You know, we we don't all we try not to always go for UFC type posters. Mm. Obviously, for our pay per views, I think we we do usually go for those, but um, we don't really use renders, which is I think. I think it just adds to the aesthetic of like Roblox type. I, I think sometimes renders get a little too realistic and then it just looks a little um, bit. I see. But I see. Renders, renders are cool still, but um, I would say that um, Kathy versus Pyra was a good fight on paper, but um, obviously Pyra injured her shoulder. Yeah. Um, shoulder injury, I believe. Yeah. But, Kathy's brother came in to fight, but um, I, that's honestly, how you know. I I don't even the main event tonight. I mean, it was a great card, very um surprising card to to be honest. Um, it would have been better if those... Dan Guido came in and I were to fight, but it was a good card, I guess. Um, yeah, I think 
I think it's it was an underrated card, you know. On paper, everybody said, oh, this is a sleeper card. Oh, this is a pillar card. This hmm. was a card to get people without those wins on their belts. Because let me see the results. How many people were um, had no no record? Um, a few. One, two, three, four, five. Five people didn't have a record that fought today, tonight. Hmm. Although we did have a lot of pullouts, the card many. did come together. And um, it was a very successful little like saturday fight uh, fight card and um i think the rcc was supposed to host their event but i think they delayed it a little bit because i think we were hosting i'm not sure because they were supposed to host an hour before and then um they started hosting at um four when i think it, theirs was scheduled for like 4 p.m eastern so they waited an hour like something to start their event but it, that's just speculation i see well Today's main event it was a good main event. Kathy got, I heard that, um, you know, she got beat pretty bad by her brother. I, I don't know how I feel about the whole family relations as a main event fight. Um, a little bit unusual, um, especially the way uh, uh, her brother uh, uh, celebrated afterwards. Um, l a little bittersweet, but, you know, it is what it is. It's the fight game, so it is what it is. Uh, a woman's division that sounds exciting i saw that ffc had signed sweet star um i personally have so oh, not signed but i personally have been in conversations with sweet star uh asking her to join the ffc along with um uh, <clears throat> eno you know that beautiful woman eno so i'm excited for a woman division and honestly i think i think pyra is probably the most exciting female prospect of um of the game to be honest this is of the game not even just ffc what do you think um in my opinion uh i don't really know who she is no disrespect no um but um i think in my opinion i think we need a return of avery star you guys don't really know about avery star she was a demon um back in the day back when the ffc was just seven people just try just a friend group trying to fight um and avery star knew that if you went to the body you would lose more stamina so she destroyed everybody <laughs> but um and no one else knew that no no one else knew that so um and no one else knew how to transition either so mm. when me and rob so so she was she was innovative for her first time. I think the first ever time I knew Star was a problem was um, I literally played the game for my first ever time and I told Star to get on and play it against me. So she got on and played it against me and she had no experience and she was rocking me on her first ever time playing. Oh, so she's a problem. She's a problem. Where, where is where is Avery Star? Or yeah, every every star. That's her name. Yeah, I think she has some. I think she has a life. So <laughs> that's a, that's unfortunate. That's unfortunate. Unfortunately, um, so we're gonna have to cut her pretty soon. If she doesn't. No, I'm just kidding. But um, I think isn't uh, she I also think, I think, like the health advisor or whatever? I think Tyler scared her off actually. So I don't think I think that's why she's not fine anymore because Tyler's being a weirdo. But, Tyler um, is a weirdo. Yeah, respectfully, the fighters here in FFC are not very kind to to women. They aren't very kind to me because they think I look like a woman. Um, so, yeah, it is what well, it is. I want to ask you a question, Kim. All right, go ahead. Ask me. What was the stuff about the only fans? Oh, oh man. Uh, what was going on? Wade. What was this? This way, let me. Uh, okay, let me tell you something. Why way. did? What was? What was this actually? Deuce, Deuce, Deuce. Let me let me tell you something. Let me tell you a little something. You know, uh, you know, I'm pretty new to FFC. I only have two fights, you know, because you know I'm a dog like that. I you know I take fights maybe one week after another, but um, I don't really get paid the big bucks, you know, like a, like a champion yourself. Not yet, at least. So money gets tight. That's why I do this podcast. I, I needed money to fund this podcast so I can even profit off it. 
Uh, you know, that's, that's why I hold, I hold, have a whole news channel. You know, I, I, I do pant making on the side. I, I make, I make gear and everything just to, just to get by. All right. Um, but you know, when time gets tough, you gotta, you gotta, gotta sell out a little bit. And you know, I had to make that OnlyFans. Um, had to make that OnlyFans. Uh, but of course, we had weirdos like uh, Murder who got a little too obsessed with me, um, and you know, started deep faking, you know, porn of me, um, and posting that around. People, some people believe it, some people don't. But uh, most of my stuff is just pretty. Pretty, it's pretty NSFW, but you know, not in like a pornography type of way. More so a uh, artistic aesthetic nudity type of way. If you understand what I'm trying to say. No, no, no I problem at a, all. I want to get a donut. Um, no, but I also had something to do. But um, I wanted to ask, what did you think of murder leaking? The, uh, you know, the OF. Uh, oh, um, you know. Okay, I, I will confirm that that picture is real. Um, oh. However, 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 um, you know, I, I'm double cheeked up. All right, some girls like that, but uh, however, he added the Snapchat filter on it. Um, no, he added the Snapchat message message on it. He put that on there. I, I believe he has some kind of fantasy over me. Uh, I can show you the the statistics right now. He's actually my top donor and DMs me on on Only Bros every day. Um, but it, it is I mean, what it um, is. I think if you charge like 75 Robux to actually like get like these like pictures, I think people would actually pay for it and you could generate like a thousand Robux. You think so? You think, I think I'm, I'm a pretty popular news host and fighter. So I feel like some, some people might, might purchase, um, my only fans my only bros if i charge robux but it is what it is um probably not right now uh but at, at the moment uh, i'm getting deep faked on a bunch of uh, robloxian <laughs> uh corn and you know i don't really appreciate it but it brings attention to my name and my my only bros so i can't really complain uh watch out for the 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 kim uh, nude NFTs coming out soon. Um, that's coming out. Well, me and my team are working on that one. Um, I'm trying to make them crypt cryptocurrency. Um, but yeah, I, I'm revolutionizing things out here. I'm, I'm, I'm first FFC fighter to have only bros. Um, I've been making a good amount of money off it. So I, I feel like if you were to do it, you know, you could as well. But you know, it is what it is. Oh, uh, secondly, I want to apologize for the messages. That wasn't actually me. My my account got hacked. Whenever you saw the like um, the messages, right? Yeah. Um, you know, it's, that wasn't me. You, it's no, that's fine. not fine. Yeah, yeah. It's it's fine. It's fine. Um, I, I reported on it because you know it was just so outlandish. Um, I originally thought it was you. Um, you know, I'll pretend like it's not if you really want me to. It's fine. But you know, that's in the mean? past. That's in the past for now. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Of course, of course. Um, that's fine. That's fine. That's hey, th that's old news. Two days ago, but it is what it's. Um, oh, actually, speaking of old oh, news, what about Ron Johnson training in Thailand? Oh yeah. Um, well, it looks like you're answering ans oh, asking me the questions now, but yeah, um, Ron Johnson yeah. training in Thailand. Uh, you know, Thailand's the fighting fighting capital of the world, I believe. So you know, it's a good move for him. Um. I'm still in Korea out here training with my, with, um, my, uh, striking coach. Give me a second. Um, uh, Teddy Ra, Teddy Ra, my, my striking coach, Teddy Ra, not Eddie Cha, Whoa. Teddy Ra, um, North Korea or uh, South Korea. Oh, um, you know, North Korea, you really can't do that stuff. So South Korea, of course, you know, I'm out here training in Busan. Um, I remember the one time. A, uh, the one that announced here said Busan. Um, it was a little bit weird, but it is what it is. Busan. Um, I, I think that was <laughs> me. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I'm pretty sure it was you as well, but it's it's completely fine. Um, I, I think you also said uh, or mispronounced a few other things Asian related for arrive, and um. Yeah, I, I've I've noticed you mispronounce a lot of things, but it's fine. It's fine. 
Um, but here's some recent news. I, I, I you now I'm DMing them to you as, as we speak. Um, oh. Murder has uh, a uh, there's a leak of uh, Murder's computer files and um, oh. a terabyte of you know you know this is you know it's kind of crazy when you say that is how do you have a terabyte of that murder is down bad yeah I, I don't know i don't know how he has that um but you know people do what people uh, what um they want to do but i i it's so whatever I, i'll report on that eventually one day if he uses my deep fakes once again uh, i'll probably probably report it oh my god um i'm now just seeing on uh you know the general chat of ffc Eno Ari aritomo fighting uh, gonzalez god she is she is she's so bad oh man I, I i would i would love to get her on the in the ffc and on this podcast oh my god sorry I, i'm having a moment to myself about you know Big, is, big crush on about the, what? what? What do you mess with? The, the white hair or the tattoos? Oh, both. Oh, dear. Oh, both of them. Both of it. The white hair, the tattoos, the the muscles, the abs. Oh. Chef kiss. Chef kiss to you know this character. I, 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 I really, I really um, enjoy watching her fight and do other things as well. Um, maybe one day she'll come to the FOC and be sitting right next to me, such as such as what you're doing as well. Um, you know, maybe maybe she might leave pretty soon. Uh, no hints why, but um, leave the FOC or, or RCC. Um, I think actually more of like stay away from one guy. Um, not you, definitely not you. Um. Probably Tyler Francis. Tyler yeah, Francis is an wanna... unusual guy, yes. Yeah, maybe you can fly Tyler Francis um, to get her right um, to, <laughs> um, you know, have her on the podcast. Yeah, yeah, that, that might be a little interesting. I'm not really interested in fighting Tyler Francis. Isn't he a lightweight at the moment? Um, I don't really see how that would bring me to a title, but... Uh... I wouldn't even grace him with uh, sharing a card with me or a fight with me. It, you it, got it just, gold on your mind? I of course I got gold in my mind. This is this is what every fighter should be should have gold in their mind or gold on their mind. Um, that's like the end goal. I mean, if you're coming here for a paycheck and just just fighting for just because you want to fight, I, you know, glory to you, I guess. But I'm here for greatness, and I'm I'm I want to become the next middleweight champion. Maybe not the next, but the next next middleweight champion. Eventually, that goal will be mine. I'm 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 cooking up every day. I'm grappling every day. Well, not well, not every day because I hate grappling. But you know, I'm I I do my best. I do my best. You, you know, you, what? Before I was a, a primary primary grappler. You know, everybody respects weight jujitsu. Nobody wants. You don't want. Nobody wants to shoot a takedown against me. We all know this. Um, mm -hmm. but grappling is the key to success because when your striking fails, you just become a wrestler. Everybody becomes a wrestler besides me. I'm not a, I was already one, but, um, Wait. Tyler Here's Francis, the... Tyler Francis, was a wrestler. he's a wrestler, Murder huh? becomes a wrestler. They mm -hmm. all become a wrestler when everything gets hurt. Everybody becomes one when they get hurt. No, when they get KO'd, when it, when people get KO'd and they get outstriked or outstruck, they go and become a wrestler and they start having fucking um, Dangestani gimmicks. Very cringe, um, very cringe progression. But no, I'm staying real to myself. You you see me strike before? I always leave everyone bloodied with that lead jab of mine. It's, it's, my, it's my it's my best tool. It's the best thing I have in my arsenal. That lead jab. I did it to Jerunas. I did it to Shasta. I did choke out Shasta. But that's only because um, I wanted to prove that I do have a ground game. Although not the greatest. But um, you will never see it. me switch it. You will never see me switch up and become a, a wrestler. That's so boring to watch. I don't have fun fighting and fighting wrestlers. I want to I want to strike. I want to stand up. And I want to, you know, I, I, I want to... I want to connect jabs. 
I want I want to I want to break people's noses respectfully. Respectfully. The best the best fights though are the strikers. You know, mm -hmm. you you saw it today. Nasty fight between um Gaethje versus um Sabian. Sabian. Nobody It was funny because nobody really thought much of this card. We did have a pretty decent attendance. I think we had like 19 at one point but that's pretty good considering we were like hosting the exact same time as the rcc mm -hmm. and you know they have most of our fighters but um i think gaichi always performs a great fight um most part, i yeah. think if ron i think the dream fight would probably be ron johnson and chris gaichi you know that would be i don't even know what how like the earth could like take that fight you know what i yeah. mean yeah like, I can see a flying knee happening, and then a flying kick, and then maybe a rolling thunder right afterwards. Yeah, I can see, I can see that happening. Um, it'll be, it'll be a great fight, but too bad they're in like different weight classes at the moment. Mm -hmm. I'm expecting to see that from Ron Johnson on February 4th, um, and hopefully I don't, I don't get caught. You know, I, I've been told people say that you know I have pretty good defense, um, I have pretty good striking, um, but. You see me get caught a few times and slip, you know, slip because it's, I, I don't ever get knocked down. I, I slip because the attacks are so shocking. You know what I mean? Do, do you understand? Yeah, I get, I get what you mean. Um, but I think, um, your defense is actually one of the, the highlights of your game. There's a lot of guys out there who are just aggressive clinch spammers. Not mm. saying I don't use the clinch because that's how I've absolutely destroyed my son Connor McBlocks but um I'm saying you're one of those patient type fighters like um Arlon Vera you know good mm. I wouldn't say Arlon has very good defense I think Arlon is a bad matchup um against Ryu I think Arlon fights with his hands down and if Ryu puts on that pressure it could be over yeah I, I do describe myself as a patient fighter I I I honestly would consider myself um, a point fighter, sadly, because I'm never really looking for the KO. Uh, I don't like I don't like to admit that because people immediately immediately think, oh, he doesn't KO people. He doesn't want to finish people. It's so boring. But you know, I'm kind of a point fighter. I, I'll tap you up a little bit. Pause. Um, you know, I'll, I'll touch you a little bit. Pause. And not me, right? Yeah, you don't want to fight me. Well, I mean, I've sparred with you one time. It wasn't. It, it was pretty close. I'd say it was pretty close. You didn't win over me, sure. But, you know, it was, it was just a spar. Um, I know you definitely felt the striking prowess from, from my part. Um, th there's no way you didn't. Um, well, actually, let's talk about that. What, what do you think? Um, you know, I have one of the strongest chins in the FFC. I'm not going to get knocked down. Um, I think you're a very solid fighter. You were you had very good um, space control, but I think I did um, hurt you bad a lot of the times, and knock mm. you down. I, I think I got knocked down maybe once or twice. No, no I, I think I got slipped. I think I slipped once or twice. Uh, no, 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 no. That, that was that wasn't a slip because that was in the. See, um, I think I'm not one to say, and I respect you, Mr. Kim, but you you do have a deteriorating um, chin. And me and Rob like to classify that as a man whose time, um, who has a chin that goes down after time, um, during time. Um, it's not personal. I just see that chin wearing down over time when you get older. Um, and I'm, I'm pretty young. I'm pretty young. I'm, I'm still pretty young, I, I'd say. I'm, I'm probably one of the youngest ones there, I, I, I think. But, you know... I think I get caught just right, you know, just 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 right, and it, it you know it makes me slip. Um, I think when I was fighting you, a category eight earthquake actually hit and uh, t robbed me of my balance. So I think that's what happened. I don't really know if I got knocked down. I'd say, but you know, all respect to you. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um. Sometimes I do be playing in life-threatening conditions. You know what I mean? Like when I. When I first fought um, this one dude um, for the lightweight title at FFC9, um, he was a rogue gangster because murder pulled out. But nobody really remembers him. He left because he got exposed for not being 
an actual gangster. He was just a rogue gangster. Um, I, I was in life-threatening conditions at that time. I was um, low on Wi-Fi, mm. and I was sweating profusely to the high AC in my room. So I could have literally died. So, you know. Right. And of course, of course, the rogue gangster and his his crew probably would have, you know, would have murked you after the fight if you won, right? Of course, you know, there's, there's that danger as well. Um, rogue gangsters. Was he was he uh, a citizen of you know the hood? I wouldn't don't I wouldn't consider him a citizen. You know, a citizen, I would consider somebody like a Maverick. Maverick is a law abiding Blocksburg resident. <laughs> um, yeah, Blocksburg. Okay. That's but this dude, this dude was more of a like, he was the type of dude to, yeah, be on the hood, but he would be like one of the guys on the street asking for money. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. And actually, while we're talking about, um, you know, where we came from, uh, Deuce Wade, where were you brought up? What do you mean? Oh, like, where are you from? We said, we said, Mav. Oh, Chris, Gigi, oh, he's oh, K Fruitville, you know, mm. you can't have anything easy in Fruitville. If you don't know about the Fruitville, the no. Fruitville Cave and the Goosetopian War. Every day, you know, I, I, my life was threatened. Um, the maid would only come once a week. Um, sometimes she didn't come during the week. So right. life threatening um, conditions every day. But that's why Deuce Wade is... Um, and will still be the champion of the FFC lightweight division for a fat minute. Uh, and I see. anybody who says that I'm not ready for the competition, I would fry every yep. um, top contender besides. Um, well, I, I, I'm, I would leave fry everybody in the FFC right now, currently, besides. But, but not me, though. But everybody besides else. me, though. We're not going to go there. Yeah, okay, I, we, I would, we will go there. Yeah, fine. Okay, I, would, I would have to... You would you would be, unfortunately, tapping Mr. Yuvin Kim. Oh, but, oh okay. Okay. But, Interesting. Um, yeah, just all the guys need to double up on their submission defense because if I get you in the submission, it's over. If you panic in the sprawl, in the first round, you're gonna get submitted because uh, just don't panic on the ground and you'll be fine. Well, I mean, you do have amazing jujitsu, I, I, I guess. So I guess that makes you know a lot of sense. Um, I've been known to not have any uh, clinching or wrestling abilities, but um, you know, I'm getting better. Uh, you know, I, I fall for the occasional backpack cheese sometimes, but it is what it is. Uh, I don't want to reveal, reveal too much on this podcast, just in case Ron Johnson. Or, or, yeah, Ron Johnson watches. I don't want him to know my my game plan, but I feel like my game plan is usually the same every single time I go out. But okay, sounds sounds good. It sounds good. Um, let me see if there's anything else to talk about. Um, some you know more recent news. Oh, I, I I'm now just seeing the picture of Eno Aritomo and God, God, oh my. Do you do you not feel the same way for you know Aritomo as that, like I do? Yeah, let me let me show you a picture of um, something better. Is it Avery Star? Well, no, we're not gonna do that. No. <laughs> okay. Um, here, right here. Let me find it. Um, it's in the tweets somewhere. You know, you know how there was like some controversy. Ah, uh, I found it. Perfect. This is some real Fruitville stuff right here. Mm. It, oh, this, this was Dana Black's wife, correct? Yeah, don't tell Dana Black. Um, yeah. Oh, Me and Dana are cool. Oh, but is, are you are you insinuating that, you know, um, Dana Black's wife and you are? Uh, no, we're not. No, hmm. we, 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 we won't go there. We won't go. We don't have to go there. We don't want to. No, sorry, Dana. Okay, we, we, we won't have to go there. Um, let's see, let's see. Anything else to talk about before we wrap this up? Um, Sweet Star got signed, yep. Uh, card tonight, we basically talked about everything about that. Discussed FC, FFC 12 and 13. 
we discuss your next fights we discussed your ranking wait we, we haven't discussed your fight actually um i think we did yeah i'm chilling i'm but good you, this yeah. this division is easy oh is it, um do you, do you think you might want to move up and maybe go into middleweight and get boxed up by me you know i already had my time <laughs> in middleweight oh okay. um but if i did want to become a double champ uh then your time would be up well but, i mean i'm, I'm not um, the champ but it's, it's fine i guess but... i think i think you have a chance if you beat ron johnson you know but ron johnson is a hard task to get through you know he's a crazy dude um he loves the fight game this is life this so. is his life um you know not okay you know this is some secret news that people don't really know about um which is which, which is what gives me somewhat confidence when I go into this bout with Ron Johnson. Um, I think it was before my first fight. Yeah, it was yeah before uh, Jeremy's or whatever. Um, I was in the the training facility for like for like an hour, just you know grinding out, you know making sure I'm prepared. And um, you know I didn't know it until now, but. I believe I sparred Ron Johnson about four different times, or four times in a row in the same sitting. Um, he, he actually he actually came up to me and wanted to spar me, and I don't think he knew who I was. I think he was pretty shocked when he saw me in the game because I was just a new signing in FFC. Um, but uh, he wasn't informed that he I, I didn't inform him that I was, I was fighting. Uh, I was I, I was walking around asking for the train. He came up to me. He, he's like, "Train, I got a fight happening." I didn't know he was talking about FFC, and um, the record between us and sparring was three and one. Um, so you're saying you're going to destroy him? No, no, I do not think I'm going to destroy him because here's here's the thing. He gave me issues in our maybe our first or second spar where he won because um, there be, there came a time where you know, everyone realized this is this too, but you, you don't want to strike with me, so. He started clinching me up pretty hard and um you know i started getting desperate because all, all i all, all he was trying to do was set up for a clinch and uh, I, I threw some heavy attacks and gassed myself out definitely was off my game that's not how i usually fight but you know he ended up um i think choking me out that that time but other than that i i think I, I beat him like three times ko or decision oh um, but it is what it is um, i'm expecting him to be different because you know he's training in thailand or whatever so it's all good um but not a lot of people would know that and i don't i don't know i'm not sure if even he remembers but yeah yeah um i think mr jeremy pierre is a very um solid um grappler and striker um, you know, he can take a lot of hits, especially with his fight against Jeremy Pierre, um, where he was hurt very bad in the first round, but caught Jeremy Pierre and finished him. Um, and I think that if you load up against a guy like Ron Johnson, he's going to give you problems. But um, just be patient is what deuce weight does and that's why um that's why nobody is gonna be able to beat me because i'm too smart too calculated for all these guys uh -huh. i just see i i just know what they're gonna go for all right yeah i see that i, th I think that reflects in your fights i feel like i'm the same way um we're well, not exactly the same way i'm i think i'm a little less i, I think i initiate less but uh Regardless, um, yeah, I'm, I think the game plan against Ron Johnson will probably be the same. Um, I'm a little worried that he throws something crazy, but that's all good. Uh, Jeremis, he was fireball in the first round, you know, as expected. But I mean, when you play like that against me, I, I, I just, I, I, you know, I, I kind of just break you down. Ooh, okay, I see you. I, I think um, I, I think people know that. I think I think a lot of people realize that. Um, I'm looking forward to that fight, and I'm looking forward to FFC 12. It's one of our best cards, um, yet, actually. Up there with FFC 11, which is also a banger card. 
Um, it's good to see that um, no title will be vacant um, after this with the Vera and um, Whitaker fight. Um, who do you think would be, um, in your opinion, a better fight for you? Because obviously both are tough matchups, but um, I just want to hear what you think you would um, pair up against them. Uh, it, between who, Redrick and or between who? Yeah, yeah, Vera and Whitaker. Yeah. Um, honestly, they to me they kind of seem like the same to me. I don't. I, then again, I'm, I'm you know I'm still relatively new. I don't really know who they are. I don't really watch their fights besides Vera, where he KO'd Ron Johnson with the, the the flying knee, and I think that's worrisome. But um, I don't know. I feel like when you when you fight at such a high pace like that. And if you don't catch me, then it's, it's good. You're gonna have a tough night after 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 a while. Um, it, it, it slowly becomes my fight eventually. So um, I don't know. I think I I think I have a good chance against both. Um, it just it just depends on my if it's my night or not. Yeah, I think if you beat um, Ron Johnson three and O, that calls for a title shot to me. You know, in the FSC, we usually give people with um, three and O um, records title shots now. So, mm. I think I would say good luck with your fight, and um, hopefully, maybe we could fight on. I think oh. your your title fight would be um, FFC fourteen. So probably not on the same card. I think the heavyweight belt will be on FFC thirteen as well. But I'm not going to spoil any predictions it's for just... the future. It's fine. I think the FFC would appreciate me as as their middleweight champion. I think, I think I'm a pretty active dude in the community, and um, no, I I, I you yeah. know, I think I bring excitement. So I, I don't know. Yeah, we'll we like unique guys as our champs, you know. Because and how many different feds can you name like one of the guys that's like um, the same champion in like twenty different federations? Yeah, but like. Um, Flex you and... you like oh yeah the stuff I know flex um mm -hmm. but like for the FFC I would say like we're not bad champions like Rob is beating I think I used the Bellator champ now so Rob beat the Bellator champ but you don't see Rob outside of anywhere but the FFC so I think that makes us a little bit unique with our mm -hmm. special like little champs like you don't have the same champ you're like oh I don't really don't want to see this fight because who is this guy. I've already seen him fight. He's gonna win. It's like mm -hmm. new people that you don't really know about. A little mystery. Yeah, and you know, I think FFC is my only, my only organization. No, a lot of other fighters do other ones, but I think I think that's what makes me a little special here in the head. But um, yeah, I think I think no no Fed is like ours uh, federation. Yeah. Um, we also don't really do that many title fights. I think our title uh, means. I wouldn't say more. I would just say it's like in our th thing, we don't have as many like titles and like anybody, not everybody can get to the belt because I'm not going to disrespect any other like communities or federations. But I'm just saying like we don't have like five title fights in one like card. We'll just have like one or two max because mm. I think like I think that's cool um, about it. Yeah. I, I I agree as well. Um, I, I mean, it was an a, an argument that erupted like a few days ago where Murder was talking about <laughs> resetting the champions. Um, how do you feel oh. about that since you're a champion here? Murder is a bum. I knocked. I submitted him. I think he was just um. He's just a he's just a just a talker. No, he just <laughs> likes to talk a bunch, and he's just. Not very, not very, not a good guy, really. I was, that's why I beat him and he retired. And then he retired again after a lot, after he lost. And then he retired again yeah. after he <laughs> lost. Um, I'm not sure if you've seen the beef between me and Murder. Uh, he, he he's, oh, he's trying to fight me. Of course he's trying to fight me. I mean, why, why, who wouldn't want to fight me? I think if any unranked person was given the opportunity to, to fight me, they would take it immediately. Um, but yeah, you know, I do make fun of Murder for his retirement, um, retirement scares, if you, if you can call it that. Um, but yeah, uh, I think he has like probably probably one of the worst takes I've ever seen ever in row combat. Um, 
resetting the divisions and resetting titles just didn't make sense. I think he just wanted an easy title. I think he just wants a title to call for himself, call, call his, so he wanted to reset it and hopefully get a, scheduled for a title fight. I don't know how that works out, but... Um. I think the problem with him is he he doesn't... He's, he's saying a whole bunch of stuff for no reason. He's saying that because I got a title in the past when we mm -hmm. weren't as good and we had like 10 members and 20 members, I don't deserve it now because we suddenly gained more members. That doesn't mm. make sense. If if I have the title now, still, when there's like 80 people, mm -hmm. and I'm fighting the top guys, how am I not the champion if I'm beating them? Yeah, see, um, that's, why but, makes, that's why I was trying to explain as well. I don't think that when you know, went through his, his thick skull, um, I say thick because, um, you know, I don't, I don't think he gets KO'd easily, does he? He's pretty thick head, so. Um, yeah, he does not get finished, really. I don't, he's never been knocked out. Yeah, yeah, but I think, I think um, because of that, you know, he probably has a good amount of CTE um, building up in his hippocampus. Probably his memory is definitely a little bit fucked up and a little hazy. Um, it you can definitely um, see it, um, and some and his like grammar and stuff. You know, um, I don't think <laughs> he he's ever gotten me. a your right. Um, yeah. Never gotten a your right, um, and he can't properly capitalize. So. Um, yeah, I remember he did tweet at me, and I think I almost had a, a mild stroke reading like the second sentence to his tweet. Um, it was pretty. It's pretty bad. Um, I think that goes for a lot of people here. Um, I think Tyler is one of. No, Tyler has better tweets, but there's so many people here um, in the FFC. Some pretty bad apples that definitely have CTE building up and have the most horrible takes ever. Um, Hybrid theory being one of them as well. Um, Tyler Francis being, you know, racist. Tyler, <sighs> murder. <laughs> you know, you weren't here with the with the Tyler thing. You wouldn't understand how. I remember I, hearing it, but though I remember hearing it. So, let FFC. We have about thirty members, forty members at this time. Mm -hmm. Tyler Francis pulls up, and Tyler Francis fights against. Um, Roy, um, I mean, um, Chris Gaethje, mm -hmm. both of their debuts. Mm -hmm. FFC flops at FFC 9. We have a horrible FFC 9 event, mm -hmm. and we need a big comeback. Right. Roy Cerrone and Tyler Francis put on one of the best fights of all time. Tyler Francis is such a cool dude at the time. He's He has a media channel running. Um, he's a very nice, positive guy. <laughs> And yeah. then at 10 p.m. Huh? At 10 p.m. Yeah, I think I saw the tweet. Yep, keep going. He mentioned something, midget, and then <laughs> it all goes down from there. And the 20 and the 10 minutes after that are just the 10 minutes of like hell. Like, I don't even know what happened to the man. Um, yeah, very disappointed, and he got banned from the server. Oh, really? He got banned he's from the back. server? But now he's back. But now now he's back. Unfortunately, I don't think he learned. He's still... He's still saying some immature. crazy shit. Yeah. Yeah, the Predator. Um, but... <laughs> oh, yeah, that, that's, his, that's, his, that's his nickname, right? Um, that's, that's his unofficial nickname. Yeah, I, I or, remember him writing that down. It was... <laughs> Hold on, my bad. I, I need oh, to keep it professional, but um, yeah, I remember him writing that down before. Oh yeah, he he also changed his avatar to Quan Dale for like an hour, and he was just racist. So, um, not Quan Dale. Um, NBA the, the one? One. No, he was this one kid. I don't remember. Jamal. Uh, oh, he was Jamal. Yeah, Jamal. Jamal. Yeah. Yes. But. Uh, and then he was like, I can say that because I'm black and stuff. So it's like. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah, but, I know. The, I've, I've had some pretty bad run-ins with him. Sometimes he's cool. Um, I, 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 I thought he was. A, okay. Might be going a little bit off topic and maybe a little bit unprofessional here on the, on the Kim podcast. But here's um, something I know. Um, in Stun Gun, obviously I run it. Um, he was the first person to ever duck someone like twice. Um, I, I tried getting him to fight Surreal and some other, some other guy, 
and he ducked and he went to a whole different well he he, and he basically asked to go to a different division because he just felt like the other division was just too strong um and of course there's that time here uh where he he attempted to scare me by, by doxing me um you know but his, you know his his dumbass didn't really realize that you know he kind of doxed himself so uh you know i gave him a little scare back i got a little was was the to worth it a little bit i won't even lie because I, I think i definitely did, did scare him and then i dm'd him afterwards and he, he didn't reply but it is what it is um and then of course there's the the issues with women um that are pretty apparent is what it is he, he crazy guy it, it sucks to hear that he was a good guy at first and now he's kind of like whatever now but definitely a staple of ffc hope and i think he definitely represents the ffc as a whole what do you think um no he does not represent <laughs> the ffc i don't know what you're talking about oh my uh, bad oh my bad i think i think i, I think i miss I, I i misclicked with my voice um I mean, it doesn't. Yeah, I missed input. I think, I think, I think my mic I didn't think pick it. Tyler, um, he does not represent the FFC. Um, he also has four horrendous takes. I think I think he's just kind of a joke fighter. He's like I'm a Dylan Danish type fighter. He's not really yeah. nobody really <laughs> takes him serious. Yeah. Um, that, that, that keyboard that champion. That's the only gold he'll ever touch. Um, I don't. Fun fact: he's never beaten me ever. We've sparred about 20 times, I think, and I genuinely am not exaggerating this. <laughs> He's never beaten me. And he gets excited when I don't finish him inside of three rounds. <laughs> so that's just how I know that... Um, There's a little if celebration. Somehow, if he... If it's if it's plausible that he beats Johnny Bate, which I don't think he will, mm. um, I think... I'm going. He's gonna get very, very nervous in the main event, and he's gonna get knocked out. I think. I think that he, was true. As you know, on fight day, it's a different kind of pressure, and I'm not even exaggerating this to make it cooler. It's literally a different kind of game. Whenever you're in the main event, your controls feel slower, <laughs> you feel slower, and your blocking feels slower. What? I think that benefits me. I love a slow fight, but. Um, I, honestly, to this day right now, I really still don't want a main event. I don't want a main event. Um, if, if I were to too fight much in pressure, a, maybe a little too much pressure. I'm definitely an emotional fighter, not, not, not emotional, <laughs> but e emotionally driven fighter. So when I go out there, I'm nervous. I'm definitely going to admit that I'm nervous. Um, oh, <laughs> well, I remember I was with Tyler and he was on a Bellator prelim and he was terrified to fight this one dude, TV seven. Um, DV7 from what I've heard is garbage. Um, not, I don't know too much about him, but Tyler did beat him in the first round with me as his corner. Uh -huh. Um, but that's how I know Tyler is going to crumble and panic under the lights because, um, you know, he's just a kid. And Do you think he'll pull I think, out? I don't think he'll pull out. I think he'll just make an excuse if he loses. I think, I think... I've heard that he's a pull-up machine, so... Um, oh, yeah. He, he was gone for, like, three months. Really? Yeah. That's a little crazy. Interesting. Well, yeah. we, speaking about Tyler, let's, let's, let's stop shit-talking on Tyler. Let's talk about some other... Before we wrap things up, because this, this podcast is going to get pretty long to post, but... Um, that again, that'd be an hour. <laughs> it, 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 it is an hour. I'm going to have to edit that part where you... Um, and this, I might have to edit this of me saying it because now it's like out of character a little bit. But I got, I um, gotta edit it out. I gotta edit it out. But there's that five minute time where you went to go get a donut, and that, where it's just empty silence for a minute, and me saying <laughs> deuce. So um, I'm gonna edit that one out, which I hate that I'm gonna have to find it and edit it out and then export it to an MP4 again, which m might take like 20 minutes because this is about an hour long. So it is what it is. Uh, I'll probably get by in by by tonight, but we're wrapping things up by talking about a few more things about some of the fighters here that are definitely um, not supposed to represent the FFC or, or fighters that can represent the FFC. Deuce, apart from yourself, who do you think represents the uh, FFC that's currently fighting? I know you and Rob Thompson. Rob, Rob, yeah, Rob Thompson. 
um are on the cover of um ffc 4 um so that's pretty cool um and you guys definitely you guys definitely do represent the ffc who who do you think is up next um yeah who do you think is up next honestly um i'd have to say you and ron johnson um you guys are really great representations of what we do here um obviously you put a lot of effort into your editing and being interactive with the community but ron johnson is always such a nice guy and he's always help, helping out others in the ffc community and he's mm -hmm. always excited to fight so i really like to um have those people represent us so plausibly uh you guys could be on the next cover but no promises no, no but whenever that. um whenever the real ufc 5 comes out and we see what the the cover looks like we'll decide yeah um, I but, that's, um, yeah um yeah. i i feel that i feel that um i definitely do feel like you no know, i'm pretty deserving of like you know not being representative but like you know just representing the community in general i feel like i'm a pretty good representation uh, along with Ron Johnson, he's such a nice dude. I, I actually had him on the podcast, and he still need to post it. But I've had him on the podcast. He's he's a great guy. Um, there's a lot of great people, and I think most of the time on this show, I feature people that I feel like are good people, which is why you probably won't probably won't see Tyler Francis on this show. Um, but I think right now, to be honest, I'm promoting the shit out of Pyra a little bit, and the, the reason is because I think she has genuine potential as the as one of the best female fighters that i've ever faced um even comparable to uh sweet star because i've i've knocked down sweet star i've, I've ko'd sweet star and spars but the pyra like I, i'm i, I couldn't ko her i don't know what was i don't know what was the issue but i could not ko her um but yeah so i think if i, I feel like if ffc wants to promote genuine and good fighters i think looking at the kim show is probably something they should do stinky sock as well great guy um so far uh stinky even dan greater stinky sock could be the next heavyweight champion you yeah, never oh, know i really hope so I, I really do um i mean he he's he, he needs to work on his game a little bit let's 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 be real but um, he was getting very pieced up by russo yeah russo like, russo also had some nasty combinations nasty mm -hmm. very technical dustin poirier type fighter yeah rizgar definitely did have a lot of good combos um he hit he hit stinky sock in the face like five times with like a jab cross jab uppercut oh, yeah. oh, it, was, it was getting crazy but you know oh yeah everyone knows i, I i've dubbed stinky sock this nickname i'm, I'm the, the flying knee god i'm it's 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 it's, an, it's a work in progress it sounds a little it's too much of a mouthful but that knee oh man that, that knee is, is made of like titanium or some shit because that shit hits and it, you just go to sleep or, or it, hey, it briefly touches you and you go to sleep that's what you saw in his yep. fight today mm -hmm. you know stinky sock um i think he wanted to change his um fighter um style to a uh, flying knee fighter you know so when <laughs> bruce buffet <laughs> announces him uh, a flying knee fighter holding a professional record you know i think that that represents a pretty good you know Jorge Masvidal type knee. Everybody has to keep their guard high. Yeah. No matter what, they need to they need to keep their guard up whenever they're fighting him. You they you have to just tank the body shot because it's too risky having your hands <laughs> down. Exactly, because he'll hit you in the body and he'll hit, hit, somehow garner the momentum to just throw that knee up there. Um, it, it's, it's and a that crazy man doesn't guess. He, he missed like three flying knees and he, he still didn't guess. Way more <laughs> he than, did not guess. Bruce are. And no. we barely rest up. We do a 10% uh, rest up. And that man was still at like 80, 83% even after throwing like three flying knees. I was a little confused. Do you do you think that Sneaky Sock may be on the Dark Elixir? Because that's, that's a little suspicious. Being able to throw three or like a, at least fucking six knees and miss half of them and not gas out. I, I That's a little suspicious, don't you think? I think Stinky Sock, um, from what I've heard, traps himself in a dark room for <laughs> um, sometimes a few hours and he just meditates on some yuri prohaska type mentality stuff so i i don't think stinky sock is on anything you know right. i think he just has an unbreakable um knee 
that everybody needs to watch out for. I personally wouldn't want to fight Stinky Sock, you know. Too oh. dangerous. Too dangerous. Yeah, of course. I wouldn't want to. I, I'm, I, I think after he won, I checked my division. I checked that he was my division to make just to make sure that you know I wouldn't have to fight him. You know. Yeah. You you definitely don't want to fight him. You know, could end up in a wheelchair for the rest of your life if that's your retirement fight. Yeah, that's 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 a tough thing. Um, but stemming off that that you know him locking himself in a dark room, I actually heard that he locks himself in a dark room. Um, like you said. But instead of meditating, he 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 starts kneeing like wooden blocks for like like at least two hours every day. Um, complete darkness, like closing his eyes. He, he's just kneeing blocks over and over until his knees just get conditioned to um to just to everything. He, he has undestructible knees. I'm, that's, that's what I'm saying at this point. Um, and his stand up control with the knees. Um, it's just unbeatable now. Uh, it, it's rare you see a fighter like him dedicate your entire fighting style to a, a single move. But it's like what Bruce Lee said. Um, I, I'm not scared of the fighter that trained a thousand kicks once. I'm scared of the fighter that trains one kick a thousand times. And I, I think I think Stinky Sock represents that pretty well. Yeah, um, as you can see when I sent you this picture, look how far that knee was from um, Rizgar. It wasn't even close. It didn't even hit him, but yep. it did hit him, it did. and he went out. Well, here's the thing. Here's the thing. I I heard because of him locking himself in that dark room, and I I'm now inspired to make an image out of that. I will make an image out of that eventually, of him in a dark room. Um, I I've heard that because he trains those knees so much, right? The spiritual pressure around his knees are so great that if even if you're in the oh, yeah. presence of him you, you, get, you get ko'd i heard that when he goes gets his physical and they check for his reflexes once the the nurse hits the knee part and like we check for his reflexes a flying knee goes up and knocks out the, the nurse that, that's what i heard that's that just rumors but oh uh, i i believe that you saw how <laughs> you saw how high he jumped with that knee today he almost went over the cage i'm not even joking yeah, he did. i should have clipped it he literally ran at Ruzgar went for a flying knee, missed it, stepped on his head, and almost jumped out of the cage. It was that crazy. It was crazy. He, you know, it, it, what makes him like such an exciting fighter? Um, uh, because the flying knees, like it's one trick pony, yes, but like, damn, his, his, his flying knees are so good. Al almost reminiscent of uh, action movie star Tony Ja with his flying knees, where. Yo, he, he he just flies. He 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 takes the flying knee part of fly. He takes the flying part of flying knee very literal, and he defies gravity. Um, very shocking. Clear the but. runway for him. You got to clear the runway. <laughs> um, but I think St I heard Stinky Sock is even uh, more dangerous. You know, obviously Sock is in the name, uh, and Stinky. I, <laughs> I heard he was trying to wear socks out when he was fighting. Um, what? today. What? Yeah. Is that true? So, this what? is true. You know, but you we can't let a man with stinky socks in the octagon because we do have some class in the FFC. But imagine <laughs> in a street fight, the man doesn't shower. His name is Stinky. The man doesn't <laughs> wash his socks. So just imagine on the street, you get the oh. stench of it. You're distracted and then boom, the fly. Oh. That's it. oh my God. Now that you mentioned that, if you look at the photo that you sent me once more, apart from the knee, what's the closest thing to Rizgar, Rizgar's face? He's the melted. Yeah, the, 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 the foot. Yo, may, may, no. May, no. Maybe, no. Maybe it wasn't even spiritual pressure. It was just the stench that put <laughs> Ruzo out. This is a new... You have to talk about this. This is no. dangerous towards no, this fighters. Is, this, I'm, I'm going to have to do a red circle and everything on on it. In, in this video, I'm... I'm I'm gonna do what the YouTubers do. I'm putting the photo up right now. Here's the photo. This, is, this isn't even. This isn't even. Um, this isn't even a podcast anymore. This is a. This is like a um, investigation and conspiracy theory of how technical Stinky Sock is. You didn't even see it. You saw a flying <laughs> bee. He disguised it. Happened. He disguised it. That's. Oh. Oh my God. And, and oh, if you were there, if you were the medic after the fight, 
Rusko mm -hmm. was like, what happened? I, he didn't even hit me. What? What? It's, it was the pheromones. Like that. Oh my, the pheromones it, from the toes the that was building up. <laughs> the pathogens on the feet. <laughs> the, the, the stench. The it, it went up his nose and directly into his cranium, knocking up at least 25% of his cranium house. It, and his, he just, he, like, he, he fell. His sinus, like, it couldn't handle the stench. Like, his immune system just said, I'm going to take a break, yo. And, like, and, yep. he folded. that's what you saw out there. It's, that's vicious. Like, you can even see his toes. Like, <laughs> you can just... The dogs. You can see the dogs. <laughs> Our spiders don't have toes, but for whatever reason, he came out with this build knowing he had toes. And he was going to utilize those toes to win this fight. He just, wow. He disguised the, how do you even, you can't even dodge that. You can't, you can't clog can't your nose mid-fight. You can't, like, oh my god. This can't is this crazy this stuff. Up. No, you can't make it up. You can't make it up. Stinky He's sock. Him. Oh, wow. That's, that's a crazy. That's crazy. That's I'm news. I'm looking forward to his next mm -hmm. fight. Same I here. mean, you have to, you have to tell people at this point to, like, come and hear this like conspiracy because this is crazy yes you know, this um, is a problem mm -hmm. i know zark is the number one uh ranked contender but stinky sock is dangerous he's, he's dangerous. a dangerous fighter he's a whole different type of fighter he does not fight with his hands he does not fight with his feet he fights with his knees and stench and that's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a crazy balance and a crazy fighting style but this, this is what happens when you're in a dark room training knees all day wearing stinky socks and never changing them honestly quite honestly i feel like this, this might be a little controversial but the ff the ffc should have let him wear socks because i feel like that would have at least concealed the smell of the toes slightly but i think he i think he was probably it could have made it worse you know it's dangerous i don't know it's it's I don't know. We might need to get Avery Star to check out. Wait, isn't Avery Star the medic? Who's the medic here? Um, I... um, whatever, whatever commissioner wants to be the medic at the time, we'll have I... to definitely, we'll definitely have to check him. Yeah. Um, for any, any, you know, of that yeah. suspicious. Yeah. Check for the pathogens um, in his toes and whatnot. Yeah. That's about right. Yes. This is some big news, though. Um, this is huge. It's crazy. News. But. We're, we're getting up to an hour and 30 minutes. We should probably wrap this up. This is probably the biggest news that we can probably think talk about tonight. Um, is there anything else you want to talk about before I wrap this podcast up? And uh, yeah. Um, I think the only thing I have to say is um, I have been tweeted at against um, a lot of times in the tweet sketch. Everybody's like, this man is afraid of the new fighters. Um, he can't compete with the, any of the top five. Um, FFC 13, put your money on the line and tell me, um, and make sure, put all of your Robux. I guarantee you will get, um, Robux out of this, um, that it will be finished inside of, um, three rounds, whoever I fight. If it's Tyler, it'll be finished inside two. Oh, okay. okay. For me. sure. For sure. All right. The, all right. I'll quote, I'll quote you on that. Um, it was great to have you on the podcast, Deuce Wade. Thank you, Mr. Kim. Any final words at all? Stay away from Stinky Sock. Yeah. Don't move to heavyweight. Do not fight him. <laughs> Do not fight Stinky Sock. Feed him to Dembe. I think Dembe... I, you say Dembe can't lose, but can can Dembe handle the stench of Stinky Sock? I don't know. That's something... That That's a question that I don't think no scientist can answer. So... No, nobody knows if Dembe is even carbon based though, so that's the problem. Oh, we don't even okay. know if he li lives off of carbon. Like he's that different. So Dembe might might be the only person who can fight um, Stinky Sock and come out alive. But right. we don't know. We haven't seen Stinky Sock fight um, top level contenders. But Ruzgar was a great test though for Stinky Sock. Yeah, definitely. All right. Well, I'm gonna uh, end the recording. You. Oh, go ahead. What no, I was just saying thank you. That was right. W Podcast.